Terrific. Hi, everyone. Um, it's uh, it's good to talk to you since I've been typing at you for the last uh, couple of hours. Um, I, I'm, I don't really feel that I need to introduce myself, but for anyone who is joining us new, I'm Louis Rosenthal, and I'm the managing member of Arca Noe LLC, and we produce Arca OS. So this is the latest version of the roadmap for ARCA OS uh, version five. That would include 5.0 and 5.1. And um, I will, uh, I'm not going to monitor questions that are coming in as I'm presenting, but I will follow up when we're all done and now uh, see if I can answer all of your questions to the best of my ability. So I'm going to share my screen now, hopefully. And we'll get started. Uh, there we go. Do we have it, Martin? Did it share? Yes, yes, we have it. Okay. Um, all right, I gotta minimize you because there we go. Okay, you were right in front of my screen, so I could I could see. Uh, so, as I say, this is the ARCA OS roadmap. Um, just to get things out of the way, we have three different um, numbers in our versioning. The major release is the, the first number all the way to the left. We're at uh, version 5 right now, major release, which follows OS2 warp, which left off at 4.52. Minor release is the next digit. So right now we're at ARCA OS 5.0. The next minor release will be 5.1. And then we have bug fix or maintenance releases, which uh, come after the, the second decimal point. We're currently at 5.0.6, and we will have a 5.0.7 release coming very soon for everyone before we release 5.1.0. So moving forward, as I say, 5.0.7 is coming soon. And I'll talk about that in just a moment, but it's essentially um, a media refresh for anyone installing Arca OS 5.0. It just makes it easier to get it installed. We've cleaned up some things with the uh, installer boot the uh, the A20 gate issue that we've seen in some systems over the years is uh, has been addressed, and we've got some new drivers in it and a number of other updates just so it's all in a nice clean bundle. Um, 5.1 should be released fourth quarter of this year, latest first quarter of next year. I'm hoping. Um, we just want to get it right. I mean, our motto around the office is it's done when it's done. It's not done yet. That's why we don't have it out yet. We will get it out as soon as it's ready to go out and not any sooner. Um, 5.1 will follow the same normal release cycle of fixes and minor enhancements. So 5.1.0 will be followed by 5.1.1, uh, however long we have to do that. And 5.2 will be the next minor release, which we consider a significant point release. So 5.0.7, uh, as I said, is a media refresh. So it's got the latest drivers, the latest RPM bootstrap. So you don't need to update 101 packages after you do a 5.0.6 install fresh right now. Uh, it will, it can be installed as an update to 5.06. Um, but honestly, if you've got 5.06 and all the latest drivers, you don't really need to do that. Um, 507 does have the new drivers added to it. So NVMe and the new um, MMJME, uh, that's a multi-MAC driver, for uh, J micron uh, NICs, uh, 
are added to the uh, to the package, but they're not integrated with the installer. So you need to treat those as other drivers uh, to load from supplementary media. So to install to an NVMe device for Arca OS 507, in the preboot menu, you select use other driver and then you just type NVMe in the box. The NVMe driver is present on, on the RAM disk and will get loaded when the, uh, the system boots up. And the installer fixes uh, will enable it to boot on more systems. By installer fixes, I'm really talking about mainly that, uh, that A20 gate issue that stopped a number of systems from uh, being able to boot into the installer. 5.1.0 is currently in beta. It's been in beta for a while. Um, our betas are interesting because they're they're develop their development betas, so they're really development snapshots, uh, as opposed to a gamma release where everything is done, and we just need to test to make sure everything works. We actually test along the way as we we update uh, and add more pieces. So. Uh, it's been in beta for a while. Um, most of what I'm going to say are forward-looking statements, but that, uh, and although I say the list is subject to change, most of these things are pretty well set in the package by now. We have trimmed down our initial feature list to some extent just to better align with, uh, with the reality on the ground. Um, so, Things that we had originally planned for 5.1.0, we may have pushed off uh, to 5.1.1, 5.1.2, somewhere in the 5.1 cycle, but later on. There are five, more, five main points to, uh, to address in 5.1.0. First is UEFI support, where we have uh, no CSM required. Uh, GPT support. So GPT support is available for traditional BIOS boot uh, as well as UEFI with and without a CSM. And we can boot from those GPT uh, volumes. Vastly improved DOS and WinOS 2 support under uh, UEFI versus traditional BIOS for more modern systems where the BIOS implementation, uh, particularly for the, for the video, was insufficient for OS2's uh, virtual DOS machines to work properly. We now control that, so we have a, a working uh, DOS and WinOS2 on those newer systems. We'll have several uh, national language versions available uh, and we're at, we'll be adding more as we as we go forward, so you can finally get Arca OS in your own language uh, instead of constantly being uh, tested as to your English reading skills. Um, we do have an upgrade facility, so you can take Arca OS 5.0 to 5.1, and the upgrade is really transparent. Uh, in terms of its difference between upgrade and update. We talk about updating from 5.0.5 to 5.0.6, and we talk about upgrading from 5.0. something to 5.1. Uh, in the 5.1 installer for, for English, um, it will it will feel the same way as when you do an, uh, an update now. If the system makes all the distinction between update and upgrade on the back end, so you don't really see that. As we've been discussing today, the our UEFI solution or the Arcanoe compatibility uh, system, uh, ANCS, um, you will create an uh, uh, an ESP, that's uh, an EFI system partition, if it's not already present, or it will update an existing one with the latest code from 
the latest ARCA OS uh, ISO or DVD. Uh, UEFI support obviously frees ARCA OS from the constraints of older hardware, and certainly we really have no choice because uh, manufacturers have moved away from including a traditional BIOS in their systems. Uh, so in order for us to support systems going forward, this generation and the next generation and the generation after that, UEFI support for us was inevitable. And the UEFI solution provided by ANCS gives us an emulated video BIOS which is adequate for what ARCA OS needs for DOS and WinOS 2. Uh, so we address those shortcomings of more modern uh, uh, BIOSes and um, CSMs by providing our own. Now, Alex talked about this also about the uh, GPT. Um, GUID partition table versus MBR, master boot record. All, all partitions are the same to GPT. There's no such thing as a primary or a logical partition. And there's no um, extreme limit to the number of partitions. I mean, obviously, you can't have an infinite number of partitions. But um, if you wanted to have 100 partitions on one a 12 terabyte disk, you could certainly do it. The problem for ARCA OS, uh, of course, is that we need to have a drive letter to address a partition. So that's our limiting factor. At a certain point, we run out of drive letters. Other than that, there are no, no real limits. Um, the nice thing about being able to support GPT is that most modern systems are pre-configured with GPT uh, disk layouts. And now we no longer have to tell people, well, you're going to have to wipe the entire disk and flip it over to MBR so that we can install on it. And if the disk is bigger than two, terabyte, two terabytes, uh, you're only going to be able to use two terabytes for anything and everything because that's the biggest disk we can, we can use. We don't have that, that problem using GPT. Our support is phased. So the current version, version one, that will be shipped with ARCA OS 5.1 um, will provide for creating uh, partitions up to two terabytes in size and on disks that may be greater than two terabytes. So you can have a machine with a 12 terabyte drive in it. And as long as we have empty space to create partitions, we can use that and create one or more uh, partitions uh, for Arca OS up to two terabytes in size per partition. Um, a GPT disk can coexist with other MBR master boot record disks in the same system. There's full support for this in the ARCA OS installer. So as you're uh, selecting your volumes for installation, um, all of the ancillary tools that you might need to use are aware of GPT disks and will configure them. You can configure your, your space uh, without having to resort to third party systems or anything else. Later on, say version two of the GPT solution would be to possibly support greater than two terabyte partitions. And of course, we want to support removable devices. Um, one of my big things is, um, particularly with laptops, where we have disks that are certainly smaller than two terabytes, um, I want to be able to support really, really large uh, external drives for backup. Uh, we already have the bandwidth available to us in USB 3 with our XHCI driver. Um, 
So using USB attached disks for uh, backup storage um, makes sense. And we might need larger than two terabytes for, for backup space. So in the future, we want to be able to support those, those really big partitions, but we definitely want to be able to support removable devices uh, and we've got driver support for that stuff now. So it's really just the um, it's really just the uh, the GPT solution, the driver itself that needs to be uh, enhanced for that. So talking about DOS and Win OS 2 support, uh, we have windowed and full screen full screen DOS and Win OS 2 support now in beta. Um, we have multimedia support, uh, so you can, uh, I mean, if you've got QuickTime video, you can play that. That's not a problem. Full audio is uh, somewhat missing right now, but uh, later in the 5.1 cycle, we want to uh, release a virtual Sound Blaster 16 driver, a VDD, uh, and that would route uh, Sound Blaster audio from DOS sessions uh, to whatever audio driver is in use. We also have DT audio, which is our licensed version of the digital transfer agent, DTA, um, to route WinOS 2 audio to UniAud. That needs some more work before it's production ready, but uh, it's coming along and planned for later in the 5.1 cycle. We've tested many existing DOS and Win 3 applications and games. Um, and most of the ones that we've tested work, work very well. They're, they're definitely usable. There are new DOS and Win OS 2 session settings. So, you know, when you go into the workplace shell object for a DOS session and you go to... Um, the settings tab, and you click the button for uh, for DOS uh, settings. We have new ones that are now available to fine tune the video behavior uh, and some other some other things specific to running DOS and WinOS 2 under UEFI. Localization. So in beta. Uh, as you can see, we have quite a few languages that we're that we build for each of our beta releases. Um, the double byte character set languages uh, have some particular quirks uh, related to UEFI, um, and they're also uh, not quite not as complete as some of the single byte character set languages, such as German, Spanish. French and Italian, um, and Russian. Russian's doing really well, I have to say. And we intend to improve the NLV quality. So if 510 comes out and in your particular language, 80% uh, of the operating system is translated, you can look for the rest of it to be translated as we go farther along in the 5.1 release cycle. So the plan is to keep improving and keep translating more uh, pieces. Even IBM didn't quite get done with all of their translation. And there are bits and pieces of German and Spanish uh, releases that were never translated from English. Well, we, we have a thing about that. We would like to get uh, all of those pieces translated in time. So Upgrade, uh, Upgrade is working in the beta. As I say, it works uh, similar to the, the 5.0 update, but it, um, it allows for more, uh, more package changes to take place and some disk layout changes. For instance, we've reorganized the wallpaper. So that's part of an upgrade process instead of an update process. Um, Hopefully, the way we've reorganized and added new wallpapers should make it easier to select 
uh, desktop backgrounds um, for your screen resolution. Now, upgrade obviously is only valid for English because we didn't have any 5.0 uh, NLVs. Um, and you can't use upgrade to switch from a 5.0 English to a 5.1.0 um, uh, German or French or Italian uh, release. So you can only go English to English. And later on, when we do 5.1 um, updates, they will only be same language to same language. So there, you won't be able to flip uh, languages around um, when you get a, a new release. You'll have to do a, a clean install for that. Um, going forward, other bits. Um, yeah, you can now select your platform for the Unix compatibility subsystem, the, the, um, the RPM platform. Um, we detect that automatically, uh, whether the system is Pentium 4 compatible uh, as opposed to the, the more basic i686. Um, but you can override that in the installer. Um, for instance, uh, I have a, a an older ThinkPad T43, which is barely Pentium 4 compatible. It does pass for Pentium 4, and I use Pentium 4 packages. But it may be that i686 is a better match for that. I could override that and select i686 for my installation. Um, otherwise, it gets the a better match uh, in general for the hardware uh, on which we're installing um, going forward. It's a bit of an involved process to switch from i686 to Pentium 4 after the system's installed. So this makes it easier to get the system at the right uh, platform going forward. We have an updated Samba 4 client, which is based on a uh, Focal Fossa uh, release of, um, uh, what's that, Debian, I guess? Or no, not Debian, that's um, um, Fedora, sorry. And that's got long-term support. So we won't need to stay on the Samba upgrade uh, treadmill um, we'll have a stable Samba 4 platform that we can use for several releases, um, and they will be backporting upstream from us, uh, security updates and things like that, um, for, uh, for some time. And we have a new, uh, Arca mapper. It is completely redone and, and rewritten that, that Alex did. He worked very hard on that. It works very, very well. Uh, it's got a QT4-based uh, GUI. Uh, it's very user-friendly, and it is um, much more consistent in its behavior than the Arca Mapper that we've been using to date. These will all be coming in Arca OS 5.1. So the, the um, platform selection will be in 5.1, but it will not be in the 507 release. Um, Samba 4, um, I believe, is also going to, the, the updated Samba 4 is also going to be in 507. But the new Arca Mapper, the QT-based Arca Mapper, will not be in 5.07. That will be in 5.1. So some other 5.1 features going forward. These, these will not be in 5.1.0, but uh, hopefully we'll get them into 5.1 somewhere along the line. If that's 5.1.2, 5.1.3, I don't know. But a uh, new rewritten printer manager that should make it easier to install your printers, whatever type they may be, cups or whatever, uh, in one um, application. Uh, a new desktop 
notebook background page that recognizes PNGs and um, has some new capabilities. Uh, it can find it'll it should be able to find wallpaper that's in other directories other than OS2 bitmap automatically and uh, previews and um, timed wallpaper changes or random wallpaper changes, things like that. A new hardware manager to replace the the older one that we inherited from OS2 Warp. Um, think along the lines of Hardware Explorer that um, that Andre has um, out. That's probably what we're going to use as a replacement. A new desktop search utility, uh, 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 the latest build of Recall, probably, which um, certainly as our disks and our partitions are getting larger, finding files that are tucked away in various corners of the system become more difficult. And this will help us um, hunt those things down. And of course, a newer Java runtime when it's available because um, Java 6 is really showing its age. We, we definitely need a newer, a newer Java. New text editors and calculators. You should see some of these in 5.1.0. Certainly one other uh, text editor, Alex's uh, quick edit, um, should, be, uh, should be in there, um, possibly another calculator. Uh, as a uh, new software selection, an updated VNC server and viewer um, that's based on ultra VNC um, to provide better uh, VNC performance. Uh, we're looking at uh, improving the INET config settings out of the box for a better basic uh, network uh, tune when the system is uh, built. Uh, and at some time, at some point in the 5.1 release cycle, we'd like to have um, a system-wide squid proxy with an optional privoxy chain on that and a configuration GUI for them. The configuration GUI has not been written. Squid proxy and privoxy do exist for, for OS2, um, but they're not bundled with Arca OS now, and they're not, so obviously they're not selectable software packages. Uh, but it would be nice to have those available for system-wide use um, right from the installer. As David discussed earlier, the multi-Mac WLAN drivers um, we want to add as as they're they become available. Qt5. We have some basic Qt5 packages already in in the 5.1 beta releases. When we get a full release of what's needed for the Qt5 um, based Otter browser, we'll add those packages too. DT Audio. I mentioned before. That's um, that's the WinOS2 audio component that routes audio from WinOS 2 to uh, UniAud, um, and a virtual sound blaster driver for DOS sessions. We want to get those in there. And those are really the, the main holdups to issuing what we would call or we would term a retro gaming release, something that's absolutely ready to install and run uh, available DOS and, and Win3 games. We'd like to be able to do that with uh, with joystick support, uh, although we realize that, that that's kind of difficult. Uh, particularly classic joysticks, um, it's, it's tough. And when you use one of those uh, game port to USB adapters, there's a lot that needs to be considered uh, in terms of timing, I understand. Um, so we haven't really looked closely at that, but that's part of what we would like to have in a retro gaming release. 
So I mentioned a little bit before about updates and, and upgrades. Um, updates are always included with support and maintenance subscription. So as long as your support and maintenance subscription is current, you're entitled to the latest ISO for, for your minor release. Uh, and download that latest ISO and run your update. You're good to go. Upgrade. Um, so 5.0 to 5.1 is a new purchase. Um, if you're an existing 5.0 user with active support and maintenance, there is a heavy dis there will be um, a heavy discount to go to 5.1. Um, if you're a new 5.1 user, that's just an, a new purchase. If you're a 5.0 user and your support and maintenance has expired, there will not be as big a discount to go to 5.1. Um, updates for 5.0 will continue. As, as you can see, we have a 5.07 release now planned. We'd originally planned that 5.05 was going to be the last 5.0 release. Then 506 was going to be the last. And the point was that when we came out with 5.1, we were going to pretty much stop making new 5.0 releases available. But honestly, as long as we have subscribers to support and maintenance for 5.0, we will continue refreshing 5.0 with later maintenance releases. So that will be for some time yet. No one will be forced to go to 5.1. Uh, I mean, at some point, I guess, in the future, maybe when we're at 5.2, we'll phase out 5.0. We'll have to see. We haven't made a decision on that at all. And um, when you get a 5.1 license, um, that will have uh, that will require a different support and maintenance subscription specific to 5.1. Why? Well, there's content in 5.1 that was not released in 5.0. So that 5.1 um, subscription channel will have updates that are um, related to 5.1 and not related to 5.0. And the reverse is also true. If you have a 5.0 support and maintenance subscription, you're not going to get your 5.1 updates in that unless it's a component that's used in both of them. So there will be two different subscriptions when they when they come about. Um, before I go to questions, um, I mentioned before that I talk a little bit about uh, kernel updates. Um, we don't really have planned kernel updates. Um, there are things that we want to fix in the kernel. Um, we don't have a particular schedule as to when those come come about. Um, remember when we talk about the OS2 kernel, we are really talking about a suite of different things. We're talking about uh, OS2 boot, uh, OS2 kernel, OS2 loader, we're talking about the base device drivers. We're talking about the ACPI PSD. Everything to get the system booted and running, and then once it's booted and running, to keep it running. Um, er everything, I guess, below the device drivers that uh, that the kernel loads during, during boot. Um, the OS2 dumper, the OS2 dump, I should say, the, the, the dumper, the dump facility has been enhanced. Um, we can use the dumper now for systems that have GPT disks in them. We have the option to dump to the RAM disk. Uh, and then, of course, the RAM disk has to be configured to survive a reboot. So we can get the dump file off of the RAM disk. Um, the so the dumper has been been enhanced um, for so those situations where we don't have uh, an MBR disk available. Um, 
the PSD, the ACPI PSD is constantly being um, uh, maintained. It's updated to support the latest uh, ACPI CA from Intel, uh, or I should I should probably say from the um, the ACPI um, consortium. Um, but every now and again, something will come up, and um, David will identify something. Someone will report a problem to us. Something's not initializing properly, and and he'll he'll find an edge case that uh, that should be addressed, and there'll be a, a an update to the PSD. So that's ongoing work. Um, once again, to make it very, very, very clear for everyone, ARCA OS is a 32-bit operating system. It will not be a 64-bit operating system. There is no 64-bit kernel. There are no plans to make a 64-bit kernel. If we had a 64-bit kernel, we don't have any other 64-bit software to take advantage of a 64-bit kernel. So having a 64-bit kernel is of very little use to OS2. Um, now, that being said, could we use memory above four gigabytes? Headroom is always a good thing. We're able to use that memory now for a RAM disk. Um, could we use that for um, other PAE purposes, as in swapping code and data up there? Um, that remains to be seen. We're, we're looking at all sorts of ways that we might be able to take advantage of access to that space above the four gigabyte boundary. Um, all of them are involved uh, and we have no definite plans as to if or when we will um, have more tools that utilize that space. Um, the 64-bit uh, IO uh, problem that David discussed before. Uh, we're certainly considering what our options are, what our alternatives are for systems that come out that uh, put the video up above four gigabytes. So you start to boot the machine and the screen goes black because we can't read that memory. Uh, we're, we're looking at options to be able to remap that. Um, so with that, I'll leave it at questions and I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And you can ask me what you like. Okay, let's see the questions. There is a question if the um, ArcOS uh, can be upgraded from, from 5.0 to 5.1 from one language to another. No. It's got to be the English only from 5.0 to 5.1. Uh, and once you're on 5.1 of a particular language, so if you get 5.1 Spanish, uh, when you want to go to 5.1.1, that would be a 5.1.0 to 5.1.1 Spanish to Spanish. Always the same language. There are too many files that change between languages to make language switching practical. Um, I'm looking at, um, Ibrahim's got a question here on, um, IRC. In the spirit of retro gaming release, boosting the capabilities of DOS Win OS 2, is there any chance Arkanoe would consider bun uh, bundling in a release of QEMU 
for the sake of low to mid end 3D gaming in Windows 9598. Um, I don't think so. The only thing that we would really do with that is we might package QEMU as an RPM and then you could install it using Arkanoe Package Manager and set it up for yourself. We have a problem um, insofar as the size of the ISO is concerned. At a certain point, um, this download and and the, the ARCA OS ISO itself gets really, really, really huge. And um, it's just impractical to keep adding a whole bunch of other uh, software to the uh, to the distribution for a narrow group of users. Instead, it makes much more sense to go ahead and um, make those packages available for people to download and install later in an easy fashion. So that's probably what we're going to do. The same thing goes for fonts. We've had a request to add Hebrew fonts to the distribution. Um, we've got so a couple of Hebrew fonts that are packaged already. Those will be available for installation with um, Arkanoe Package Manager. Um, other stuff the same way. There is a question on YouTube um, talking about the uh, well, BOS retro gaming emulation. Um, if there was a solution on OS2 or Arca OS that can slow down the CPU performance to support some old BOS games that that goes very fast. Uh, there, uh, I believe there's a mention in the wiki about getting the most out of DOS and WinOS 2 sessions uh, about an application called Most Slow. It's still available, uh, and it does slow down uh, software that was built that, that depends upon uh, timing loops. So it, it will introduce um, more, uh, more loops so it, it, the, the software thinks it's running on something like a 286 or a 386 um, at a, you know, whatever those speeds were. Um, and uh, also um, another useful utility for DOS and, and WinOS 2 uh, that, that deals with the keyboard polling problem where the CPU gets hogged is TAME. T-A-M-E, uh, and it tames that keyboard polling, so the machine isn't constantly busy uh, polling for keyboard input. Those are third-party applications. We do not have them available in the Arkanoe store, but we do, I believe, that the wiki has links. I'll double-check that and add them if we don't. Okay. Um, there, there is another question. Uh, I think it has that if you upgrade from ArcaOS, uh, ArcaOS 5.0 to 5.1, will it include the six month subscription? If you if you upgrade from 5.0 to 5.1, will the upgrade include a six month subscription? I, I think that's the, the question, yeah. We haven't quite finalized all of these these details yet. Um, there will, if you've got, let's say you have six months of remaining support in your um, your 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 uh, Arca OS uh, subscription for 5.0, and you do an update. Um, We'll probably add those six months onto an included six months with the license, um, or we would offer a deeper discount to not add any additional support and just let your subscription run. Honestly, we, we're considering a whole host of uh, options for upgrading from 5.0 to 5.1, and we really haven't set anything in stone yet. And there's another question. My best advice, let me just say this. My best advice to everyone 
is to keep your 5.0 subscription current because that is definitely going to give you the best discount on 5.1, however we work that out. Okay, that's good. And there is another question. Um, oh, sorry. Is there any plans to go multi-user? And, well, perhaps allowing Windows Active Directory documents download folders, etc. I'm not sure about the question what multi-user has to do with uh, Active Directory, that, well, the multi-user well, question sounds good, yeah. Um, okay, so let me, let, me take the, let me take that as two different questions. Multi-user, yes, definitely. Um, we're looking, that's probably farther off. That's probably for the 5.2 release. Um, so that could be four or five years off from here now. Um, something based on um, uh, security extensions uh, for OS2. Um that would allow each individual user to log in with a separate password and uh, restrict access to other users' uh, files on the same system. So, yes, multi-user is something that is on the long-term drawing board for ARCA OS. As far as Active Directory uh, authentication, we already have a solution for that now. Um, called 2ADC, the, the OS2 Active Directory Connector. Um, we have a large enterprise client using that solution. Um, would we make something like that available for ARCA OS in a, in a, as part of the operating system? I'm not sure from, from, from where I sit today. Uh, it's possible. It would it would really depend upon the use case for that on a regular basis. Just said uh, Kemp has a question. Uh, Andy was also there uh, replying mm -hmm. that question. It's about if uh, can we or could we, at some time in the future, put a swapper file on the RAM disk? Andy says that he has done that. Well, yeah, theoretically, you could put the swapper on the RAM disk, but, I mean, let's think about it. We can only access four gigabytes of, of memory. So if you've got a machine that's got less than four gigabytes, why would you want to put your swapper on the RAM disk instead of... In other words, you've got to allocate RAM for the RAM disk. Um, so yeah, theoretically you can you can do that, but it's of um, at a certain point you have, the the law of diminishing returns applies. You're using more of your memory for the RAM disk than you could be using for other better purposes. And here's the real kicker. Today, most of us are using solid state drives. So the difference in access uh, time between the RAM disk and the SSD is really minimal. Um, in addition, when you're running a machine that's got four gigabytes of workable RAM, you're not swapping anyway. I mean, there's nothing to swap. You only have four gigabytes. So if you have a if you have a machine that's got a gigabyte of RAM, your swap file is only going to is only going to give you three gigabytes of extra space to swap out to four gigabytes max. If you've got a machine that already has four gigabytes of RAM, you're not going to be swapping anyway. So it really doesn't it really doesn't matter. Um, it's one of those things that as a um, an intellectual exercise, sure, you can put the swapper on the RAM disk, but it's not really very practical.
Mm -hmm. Sure, a multi-port serial card, sure. Not uh, none of of whom have asked us for any new drivers or anything. So anyone who's running one of those cards either has a driver or is not running PCI Express is running PCI. Um, for instance, um, Digiboard made decent drivers for their PCI offerings and and ESA offerings. Um, and those those cards, as far as I know, are still in use, and those drivers still work. I mean, the great part about Arca OS is that if you have an OS2 driver from uh, a machine that was running Warp 4 15 years ago, it still works. It still functions just fine under Arca OS. No problem whatsoever. Um, so the only time you're going to need a driver is if you get a, um, if you get say, uh, a new, one of these new cards that doesn't have a driver whatsoever. And then you might need a, might need a driver. Um, and certainly you can contact us and we're happy to look at opportunities to, to do drivers. We've done that in the past for, um, uh, even an ArcNet card. Believe it or not. Okay. There is a question if there is any any plan to make a modern backup solution. A, a modern what solution? I'm sorry? Backup. Backup. A modern backup solution. Um not specifically, but um, it's something that we could certainly look at doing. Uh, there are some interesting uh, there are some interesting things on Hobbs, and of course, in our um, the Arkanoe store, we have um, we have a, a backup solution from um, I believe EchoSoft uh, has one. Um, there are backup solutions that that exist that could be uh, modernized, I suppose, that, that utilize uh, R-Sync on the back end. Um, so we don't have any direct plans right now, but certainly um, we could do that. We could do something like that. Okay, I'm trying to find any other questions. I don't understand this one from Seymour. That says, what about an LDAP for multiple users? I don't know if he's suggesting something. Uh, but I don't know, Neil, if you have some other questions on your side that I may have missed. Uh, yeah, I think Seymour had an earlier one of we're going to log error correcting you know, ECC RAM errors. I don't know if that's already done. I um, I don't know of any place that we actually do that. Uh, the the hardware may log such RAM errors in in the BIOS on on certain servers, um, but on workstations and laptops, I've not seen anything like that uh, on at the operating system level, and not even in in the system BIOS for for non-server um, platforms. We certainly don't have any plans to write something like that. Anything else? Oh, you know what I didn't mention was I, I talked a little bit about the uh, the new browser getting into Arca OS 5.1. That does not mean that we're going to remove Firefox, SeaMonkey, and Thunderbird. They will stay. Um, the new browser will just be another offering. That's one of those things that we would expand the size of the ISO to to add the, the browser to it. 
The point of delivering software in the ISO is so that a base install gets you a an immediately usable system, and that would include an updated uh, an updated browser. Um, the Mozilla applications will be updated in 5.1, and um, I don't think we're going to get the get newer versions in 507. But in 5.1, uh, we we're shooting to get uh, refreshed builds of uh, SeaMonkey and Firefox and Thunderbird. And there is some uh, there's some discussion about um, a Qt based email application as an alternative to Thunderbird. Um, I think Greg Young is looking at uh, Trojita as a, a possible um, target. Um, we'll watch that closely and see. I don't know if we would bundle that with the operating system or not, though. Anything else? All quiet? Seems to be. Yes, I'm trying to find any more questions because there is also more discussion than questions, but I'm not sure if I'm missing something. Well, I'm not looking at YouTube right now myself because yeah. I, the delay is distracting to me. And yeah. Watching myself looking at me is very uh, disconcerting. Yeah, yeah. And well, I don't know. One final question: How how is the business going? Is is ArcOS a sustainable operating system? Is it going fine? <laughs> business business is good, actually. Um, business is sustainable. You know, we um, we stopped burning investor money in. 2017 before the Arca OS release and um, we have been self-sufficient ever since um, business is good for us between consulting and sales um, and um, we do not have a problem going forward I mean we we are able to pay our bills and invest in research and development going forward uh, obviously, we could always do with more business. More business is good. Um, we look at the um, the retro gaming market as a huge, wide open vertical market for us. When we get to that point, um, the gaming industry is absolutely immense, and really, it's something for Arca OS which has been untapped to this point. Um, but those are all new business opportunities for us. Um, our existing business keeps us going. We're we're doing well. We're obviously doing something right because people, by and large, it, the vast majority of Arca OS users renew their support on a regular basis. So they must see value in our support and our and our updates. And you know we're not we're not slacking off. We're we're going to continue um, adding new drivers and new software to the subscription, and um, we're going to try to keep up with as many uh, trouble tickets as we can. And I should add about trouble tickets, uh, the, the majority of our trouble tickets are not from systems that are, that are in ongoing use. They're generally installation type issues. I I put my stick in the machine, I booted it to the installer, and I ran into a problem. Our trouble ticket issues are not issues that Arca OS was working fine and yesterday it died for no reason. Um, so that's a good sign for us. And we learn from those installation problems and we address certain things like the A20 gate issue, for instance. Uh, so yeah, business is business is doing well, and we're not going anywhere in terms of leaving the market space. We're we're here for the long haul. 
Okay, that's awesome. I don't know, Neil, is there any other question? No, they're having a big discussion about Firefox versus uh, Chromium. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good discussion to have. The uh, you know, Look, every OS2 user knows that our um, main point has always been user choice. The more browsers we have available from which to select, the happier we all are. Um, so I think the more browsers we can add to our selection, um, the the better the better it is for for Arca OS going forward. Are we ready for, for John's closing session? Yes, I think so. Okay, I, I think we're done with customs, right? I think so, yeah. Seems to be, okay. seems to be. Okay. Terrific. All right, guys. I will. Uh, I will sign off. Thank you, everyone, for for tuning in. We we really uh, we really enjoyed having you today. Thank you very much, Louis. And yeah, thanks, Louis. Thanks. You bet. <laughs>